before the war, I had met maybe one billionaire in my life. Since the war, I've met eight now. The, the elites are coming out of the woodwork and they're buying these bunkers. It's the whole world wants these NBC air filtration systems. Everybody's clamoring for them. Governments plan for a nuclear attacks or dirty bombs and stuff like that. And of course they pray it never happens. In the, the end, money's gonna have no value. What's gonna matter is food, supplies, medicine, clean water. People have to prepare when things are calm. They can't wait till wars break out. Otherwise, the prices are gonna skyrocket. You're not gonna be able to get the food and supplies. People always panic by at the last minute. They gotta stop doing that. It's better to have it, you know, five years too early than get it five seconds too late. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here, back again with Ron from Atlas Survival Shelters. In my personal opinion, probably one of the premium bunker contractors from around the world, one of the biggest and busiest, I would imagine. I want to have Ron back to, to understand the state of the industry right now. And for me personally, if there's any canary in the coal mine when it comes to what is going on in the world, it's the bunker building industry. Because you know, if the people who have enough money to buy a bunker are starting to build them in mass. And that means that something is coming kind of like when the, the animals and the birds, you know, fly away before an earthquake strikes. That's what I view it as. So Ron, how are you doing, man? And uh, maybe you can fill us in a bit on what is the state of the industry right now? Well, it's busy and it's been busy even before the war, the war just made it kind of crazy for me. It was the Monday after the war started. So the war started on what a Wednesday or Thursday, then that Monday afterwards is when my phone started ringing. And I'm talking every 30, 40 seconds. And that it stayed like that for about three weeks. Then on the fourth week, it slowed down a little bit, but it was like every two to three minutes. And then the last week or two, it's really slowed down. It slowed down to like pre-war numbers for me anyway. But it, it's always been busy for me, you know, because I have my YouTube channel as well. And that, that creates a lot of costs. So I've, I've always been busy. But the war thing, I didn't need the war to be busy to make bunkers. Uh, I don't, I don't need that. We don't need the war period, but um, the, the state of the industry was strong because of the COVID and the fact that we live in a world that's uncertain and people are afraid it's better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it attitude. And, you know, I preach to my followers as well about being prepared as well as you do. And uh, so they're listening and they're doing the right thing. So the, the mentality of a lot of wealthy people who buy bunkers is, that in a split second, they can lose all their millions overnight. And their attitude is, I'd rather take some of this money and put it in a bunker in the ground and hope I never need it and use that as my plan B than to not have one at all and then lose my money and what I got. I'm just like every other Joe Blow walking down the street looking for food. So that's why people are buying bunkers. And the bunkers I'm selling, as you know, they're going underneath houses. So they're doubling as like a wine cellar or a gun room or a movie theater or a man cave or just some kind of hobby room. So they're not going to waste if they put them underneath the house. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, if we were ever to have a zero day like that, where, you know, the banks just got wiped out or whatever, all of your wealth would essentially be for naught and possession would literally be nine tenths of the law. And basically what you had on your person would be what you are physically worth. So have the prices of bunkers increased in the last since we spoke last time? And for people who don't know, me and Ron have done these kind of interviews before. He goes into great depth about all the nuances of bunker building and, you know, all your questions will be answered in all those videos. The purpose of today's video is to get an update on the state of the industry. So what are the, uh, the prices of bunkers? Has it gone up even more? Because I know last time when we talked you were saying that the price of steel was really high and, you know, there was a pretty high bar for entry into this thing. Well, the price is still tripled or even quadrupled. Two years ago, I was paying 30 cents a pound for my plate steel. Today, I'm paying $1.25 a pound. So that's more than quadrupled. So I would say the price of the bunkers has gone up probably about 30 to 40 percent from, say, two, two and a half years ago. But I haven't raised anything a penny since this war started. But I can tell you, since the war started, the price of steel has gone up about five or six percent. The price of the air systems has gone up about 40 to 50 percent. But I am holding the prices I had a year ago because they kind of maxed out a year ago. 
So I'm holding the line right now, but I don't know how much longer I can hold it, but I'm trying to keep the prices to where everybody can afford one. And the good news is I'm getting ready to come out with a bunker for the average guy. Uh, I'm getting a lot of calls. People can't afford my upscale bunkers. I'm like, I found that sweet spot. And that sweet spot is around $40,000. So I'm going to produce a hundred shelters at $40,000 that are called the Garnado. And they're eight feet by 10 feet. You can get maybe two people, uh, two adults and a child or two adults and, uh, and a dog in there. They're going to have a mudroom. They're going to have the gas tight door. They're going to have the Swiss air system with the manual override crank. What they're not going to have, they're not going to have the underfloor storage and they're not going to have the eight foot tall ceilings. They're going to be seven foot tall ceilings, but I can ship them in one piece. So there's no welding required. So I'm listening to people. And my goal is to be able to get a bunker delivered and installed for $50,000. So I'm getting ready to produce 100 of them. I'll see how it goes. Um, if it goes well, maybe I can produce more. But the problem is I can't hardly get 100 air systems for these 100 shelters. The same air system that goes in a $40,000 shelter is the same one that goes in a $200,000 shelter. So it's like you have a bullet. Do you use the bullet to shoot a deer or do you use a bullet to shoot a rabbit? We give you a little snack, a deer will feed you for a week. But I listen to people and I care about the average guy and I want to help them. So yes, I, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put a shelter out there in the next week that people can afford. So the average blue collar guy can get something delivered. So he has some chance of survival in a bunker. That's interesting. So you're saying a lot of the components that go into uh, making the air filtration systems and perhaps some of the other parts of the bunker are in extremely short supply. And I know that uh, first and foremost, with my experience in uh, you know selling various types of preparedness supplies, that there are major shortages right now. So I guess the question would be, how long would it take if a person was to place an order with you today, how long would it take for it to actually get in the ground or get shipped to them, realistically speaking? Well, if they ordered it today I, and I sold them what I had on inventory, they could probably get it in two to three months, which isn't bad. But it's the whole world wants these NBC air filtration systems. Everybody's clamoring for them. And I have more buying power than pretty much anybody in the world to get it. And I'm having a hard time getting them right now because I will only use Swiss air systems or even Israelis, but the Israelis don't even want to let their air systems out. So I'm only using Swiss. But realistically, these hundred um, forty thousand dollar shelters that I'm going to make. It's going to take me probably eight to nine months before everybody would get their shelter. But the first few people who order it would get theirs pretty quick, because I've got maybe 20, 30 of these air systems on hand. I got to get another shipment of these air systems, and, and like I said, the price on them went up fifty percent in the last four weeks. Yeah, this it's pretty scary to know that you know, of the billions of people in the world, we're talking about nine months to get a hundred shelters. And uh, that's, uh, it, it's pretty scary in terms of, you know, how close we are potentially getting to a major conflict uh, between East and West. Now, are you seeing uh, people who are perhaps a bit more well-connected? Are, are the elites uh, preparing more? Are you getting phone calls from people in you know more prestigious places or privileged places well nate i don't you know that open the factory in europe right that's what i was going to ask you about yeah how's that going yeah well i opened a factory in poland about eight months ago and i've got projects all over europe matter of fact two of the largest bunker projects uh in the world are projects that i'm doing some of the engineering on one's in one's in berlin the other one's in italy it's funny. I would say uh, before the war, I had met maybe one billionaire in my life. Since the war, I've met eight now. And the, the elites are coming out of the woodwork and they're buying these bunkers. And they're not buying small bunkers. They're buying my fat boy. So I haven't even done the video on the fat boy, but the fat boy is my latest and greatest big bunker. It's 14 feet wide, 50 feet long. It has 10 foot ceilings in it with a sunken living room and we transport it in one piece. It weighs 80,000 pounds. It is ginormous. But the people, I, it, it's like, I've learned if you build it, they will buy it. So there's guys out there that, that buy these uh, RVs, these coaches, like a Newell coach, which is a, you know, like a bus and they cost two, two and a half million dollars. So I know 
one thing that's in common with the people who buy the fat boy, these guys have car collections and they have these big fancy buses. They want the best that money can buy. That's, you know, I would say the average age of them is about 70 years old. And they're, I guess they have the attitude. You can't take it with you. You might as well spend it and have some fun with it. But my shelters that I'm making right now, I mean, these things, they're nothing short of a beautiful home. They don't feel like a bunker. They don't feel like you've been locked into a county jail. You, you feel like you've been into one of those mini cabins or one of these small mini houses that you see next to the highway that people sell. And you walk inside, you're like, wow, these things are beautiful. I'm taking a lot of pride in the shelters. I'm making them, I'm making them livable so you can use them uh, in the meantime until you shit hits the fan and then you really need them. Yeah, I would imagine as a billionaire, there really isn't a whole lot of stuff you can buy once you have a billion dollars in the bank. You can buy a house, you can buy some cars. Above and beyond that, maybe you buy yourself a nice yacht, maybe even go to space with Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm sure the, the security that comes with having a bunker is probably right up there on their priority list. So you said you're seeing a lot of activity in, in Poland and Germany. Are these like bigger projects? Are they for individuals? Or are they for like government? Well, there's two... Well, there's one guy in Italy that's building a public project for where you can buy into it for 500 people. And then there's a group in Germany that's doing a thousand person project where you can buy into it because people don't have the space for private bunkers. So these guys are building the bunkers so you can buy go buy the private space in them. And uh, so they're basically making an investment. The one project's like $35 million project for the thousand people. Um, the other one, I don't know what it is. It's around $24 million project, but, um, yeah, that way people have a place to go. That's the problem. A lot of people live in high rise buildings. They have apartments, they're wealthy, but they have no place to go. They can go check into the doomsday hotel bunker. You know? So I don't know what they're going to call it. So do you think that there, obviously there's a limited amount of these uh, Swiss air filtration systems to go around. Do you feel that uh, perhaps there are governments who are are maybe taking up a lot of the inventory right now? I mean, for the most part, it's people replenishing their air systems that they have. They're replacing their filters. They might be coming. The, the filter will last like 25 years before you're supposed to replace it. Now, they can last longer if you keep them dry. But I think a lot of people are realizing, oh, maybe I should go change my filter now. Uh, but it's basically in Europe where they are made in Switzerland, it's the steel, it's the carbon, it's the materials to make the HEPA filters. There's just a shortage on them. And then the price has gone through the ceiling. But one of my two suppliers is getting me the materials that I need. The other one is kind of booked up till the end of the year. So I'll, I'll get the products for the people. And what about in the USA? I mean, I know you're based in Texas. Are you seeing an uptick in interest there? I mean, obviously there's always an interest in America for bunkers, but uh, has that been increased at all as a result of the war? Yeah, well, the war has opened the eyes to a lot of people. So a lot of people are buying bunkers that were on the fence. I mean, there's a lot of people watching your videos right now. And it's like, oh God, I can't believe I'd buy a bunker. But guys, the bunkers I'm making, as I said, they're a part of your life. I, they're an integral part of a brand new house. So if you stick it out in the middle of a field or you stick it out in the yard, you're not going to use it as much. But when you build a house and you stick it under the house, it's no different than having a basement like people in Canada all have. Everyone has a basement up there. And you go down there and you turn them into game rooms and bedrooms and, and you use them for storage. Well, the safe cellar is what I call these. They're just an integral part of the house as well. So uh, they're not being wasted. And uh, you know, that's why I'm producing all the videos as well, Nate, you know, to show people it's like, it's not a waste of money. And you know what? It is funny, Nate, 10 years ago, I used to always have to sell them as a game room or something fun. I don't have to talk like that no more. Matter of fact, the people, when they come in, they're already sold. They just want to get an order in and they want to get it as soon as they can. It's better to have it, you know, five years too early than get it five seconds too late. But people have to prepare when things are calm. They can't wait till wars break out, then try to get their bomb shelters. They got to take a, a leap of faith, buy their food, buy their supplies and get a bunker in the ground when things are calm. Otherwise, the prices are going to skyrocket. You're not going to be able to get the food and supplies. People always panic by at the last minute. They got to stop doing that. They got to be proactive and do it in advance. I 100% agree with you. And it's very difficult to, to try to explain that to somebody who's kind of on the fence because 
They're always referencing, well, what is the news saying? Well, maybe the, the situation is dying down a bit. But the fact of the matter is, I believe we're entering the age of consequences. And I believe that this is only going to intensify. You have things, uh, uh, potential conflicts that are about to erupt all around the world. And people think we're like fear mongering when we say that. It's just a fact of life. Uh, the conditions of the world that we live in right now, that these things are going to happen eventually. It's just a matter of when. And most, you know, rational, level-headed, scientifically-minded people would agree with that. So if you know that it is going to happen at some point, don't wait until the last minute. You know, we may have a few years that go by, you know, that things die down a bit. But we know that underneath the surface, these, these tensions, as a result of what has transpired in the last two months, are, you know, they've been rejuvenated. The Cold War has been rejuvenated for decades to come. And I believe that we're on the precipice of collapse, quite frankly. So I encourage- You're 100% you're right. I, I think that, you know, we have, you know, the time to, to do these things is now. And right now the supply chain is in shambles. So I could imagine trying to scramble to get something. You know, we're talking about potential food shortages on the horizon. We're talking about, I just read a report from JP Morgan that said that uh, the price of crude could potentially go up to 180 bucks a barrel as a result of embargoes that could be placed on Russia in the coming weeks. So we are likely going to see more supply chain issues, and that's just going to ripple throughout the whole economy. And if you think getting stuff is hard now, you know, imagine six months or a year from now, at this point in the game, I'm not even trying to sell people stuff because people are coming to me and we simply don't have inventory to give them. So, you know, it's it's like you still put put in your orders now because, you know, I mean, you have a better chance now than you will tomorrow. You know, and I know you personally, Ron, we push each other's buttons once in a while. But at the end of the day, we're buddies. And I know that that you're a man of integrity who is going to make something for somebody that is going to last and it's going to do the job because you can't sleep at night if that person is not, you know, happy with their product and actually going to survive. But I can't say the same for all the people in the industry. We're not really going to go into details about that. But what about you? What is your personal plan? Because you were talking last time we had you on about how you're building like this community of uh, people. How is that uh, taking shape? The closest thing I have to a community here in Texas, the people who buy bunkers around me, you know, we've got our own little, you know, kind of like club. It's not even a club. It's just we, we, we could get together if we had to. And then, of course, I've been trying to get them to buy these MRAPs from me, these armored vehicles, because I figure if we ever had a war, there's strength in numbers. So if I'm going to be selling MRAPs to people, I want these guys to be close to me because one of those MRAPs might come to save me one day. You know, so I've been pushing MRAPs on my YouTube channel. I do it to help other people because I'm trying to build a community of like minded people around me. Now, in the future, should I be making some money? Yes. With business as good as it is, I need to start making some profits. But I've never worried about making a profit on my shelters. I've only cared about making a bunker that's going to last, it's going to work. And when you need it, it's going to be there. And have I had any mistakes or failures? Yes, this is how you learn. This is how you make a better product. I've had a few shelters that didn't work the way I wanted and I went back and fixed them at my expense. But that's how you learn and that's how you become a, that's how you make a good quality product. And I'm very proud of the product I make today. The living proof of that is 11 years in business, not one lawsuit, nor have I ever had to sue one of my customers. Zero lawsuits. That's enough said right there. Zero injuries, zero lawsuits, zero deaths, zero nothing. Okay, but am I perfect? No. But is my product great? It's as good as money can buy right now. But I'm always still trying to perfect it because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, your track record with a lot of the people that you have built bunkers for, and we're not going to name any names, but, you know, we've talked about in private. And, uh, you know, I think that speaks for itself. And yeah, that community that you were referring to was a network, I guess, of people who have bunkers who could potentially, you know, buy a ham radio or, or some other means of communication, uh, connect afterwards, because I guess you would want to connect with the community of people who were well prepped, uh, as opposed to just, you know, anybody off the street, per se. And then, of course, all of those people are going to have their own families that they're taking care of and stuff like that. 
But uh, if you were ever going to want to connect with people after the shizzy hit the fizzy, as I say, it would be people who are also preparedness minded. So they were uh, bringing an asset into your group as opposed to uh, a burden, so to speak. Well, or everybody should have a contingency plan. I mean, government's plan for uh, nuclear attacks or uh, dirty bombs and stuff like that. And of course, they pray it never happens, but they still invest time, money and assets into it. So they are prepared. I'm just saying people should take a minute one day and think about worst case scenario, because trust me, the people in Ukraine would agree with us. They're living the apocalypse right now. They're living a nightmare right now. And I literally just got off the phone with my guy in Kiev. I'm actually doing bunkers and I will be manufacturing some bunkers in Ukraine because they want to make my bunkers there. They want me to license the technology and tell them how to do it and give them the air systems. And I'm going to help Ukraine. OK, am I going to make any money off it? I don't know. Uh, but it's not really about always making money. It's about helping our fellow man, because in the end, money's going to have no value. It's going to have no value. What's going to matter is food, supplies, medicine, clean water, transportation, communications, education. That's all that's going to matter in the end, people. Putting a value on a bunch of money, collecting a bunch of cars and a bunch of houses. When it, the shit hits the fan, it, it's over, guys, okay? You better learn how to grow food. You better have chickens. And so I'm planting potatoes, raising chickens. I'm doing all these crazy things right now. But I'm learning on it. See, I'm not an expert in growing food or raising chickens, but I'm learning as we go. But there's a lot of devices out there. And I'll probably do some videos on them myself to show how bad I'm, I am at it. See, I, I may be good at making bunkers. It doesn't mean I'm innate, okay? See, you're the ultimate prepper. I'm the ultimate bunker builder. <laughs> well, I got a lot of things to learn too. So, I mean, you're not the only one. But, you, you know, you said it. You hit the nail on the head. When you said that all of this stuff, when you look at some of these images coming out of uh, some of the cities which are under bombardment currently, it looks apocalyptic. And I mean, I can only imagine people there who were preppers, you know, there's got to be preppers that were there and knew this was coming in light of things that have happened in Eastern Europe in the past. And I'm certain that they are probably doing a lot better. And, uh, you know, they're probably keeping to themselves a lot. A lot of the people you see out in the streets you know, kind of aimlessly roaming and uh, refugees and whatnot are probably the people who weren't prepared. And, you know, to have a bunker which was secure and perhaps even somewhat resistant to ordinance would be a huge asset in that situation. Now, hopefully that never happens here, but I could see why in Europe the market must just be on fire because yeah. uh, I could, I mean, if anybody's got money there anymore, I mean, that's the thing, right? You need to, you need to have enough money to buy these things, but yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that you're going to be helping them out because if anybody needs it, it's them. Well, the, the I asked the guy today when he called me, it's like, you know, the news all you show is these poor people and they're struggling. Are there any rich people in Ukraine? And he says, oh, yeah, there's a lot of rich people in Ukraine. You just don't see them on the news because they could afford to leave early and live comfortably. The people you're seeing are the poor people that don't have the money. So unfortunately, prepping is not cheap, but it's a necessity. You know, it, it's just like insurance. And I get a lot of comments from people who say, well, see, nothing ever happened. This was all a waste of time. And I'm like, do you phone up your insurance company and complain because your house didn't burn down? You know, do you phone up uh, your life insurance company and complain because your spouse hasn't died yet and you haven't gotten the insurance money? You know, it's the same thing. Like you, you have it because hopefully you're never going to need it. And yeah. you know, I'm not even advising anybody to make any financial decisions here at all either. We're just saying that prepping is insurance and it's insurance that's in the form of uh, food, water, shelter, medicine. Those are the big things. Security. You know, we're going to be doing a video on uh, body armor and stuff like that next week because that's very important. And it's uh, uh, usually a blind spot in a lot of people's planning, at least in Canada anyways, probably not in the States where you guys are armed to the teeth. But uh yeah, well, I look forward to, you know, to, to seeing how this uh, progresses for you. And I hope I know you've had some a rough go at things in the last month or so. There's been some stuff that have, that that's transpired, but I, I think you're bouncing back. And as I told you before, you know, just like like a phoenix, rise from the ashes and uh, rebuild <laughs> and, you know, build back better. And how, how is that going? You know, we have a lot of the same viewers on YouTube, but uh, my I took down the video about my fire. It's. Uh, the fire investigators didn't want me to show everything, but uh, as your viewers might know, 
um, my, my office is burnt down and, and it was arson. And uh, we don't know exactly who did it, but we highly uh, suspect some people. Yeah, we had, a, we had a fire in my offices and everything burnt down. I lost pretty much everything, okay? Uh, fortunately, the building itself had insurance, but my contents in the office were not covered, I found out. So a lot, a lot, I lost a lot of personal stuff. And you know all those duck bands I have when I go hunting? Those all were in the fire. The, the plastic parts melted, but the metal bands themselves made it through the fire. I got to cling them up. But I lost a lot of uh, pictures and plaques and awards and uh, a lot of personal stuff. It hasn't all hit me yet, but uh, yeah, that, that sucks. Uh, but you know what? We're going to rebuild the office. It, I haven't let it get me down. Um, um, I just keep on going. There's nothing I can do about it except rebuild and come back stronger and just keep producing a good product for my customers. That's all I can do. Yeah. One thing I like about you, Ron, is that, you know, we don't always agree on everything. You know, like, like I say, we kind of push each other's buttons once in a while. But the th the fact of the matter is, is that I would rather have somebody, you know, tell me what they truly think instead of just tell me what I want to hear. And I think a lot of people in this industry are really good at telling people what they want to hear as opposed to what they need to hear. And uh, I always say, like, if you want something done right, you know, no matter what your politic, probably best off to get a redneck to do it. And even my communist <laughs> counterman agrees. I'm even not a redneck. <laughs> even the communist cameraman agrees that, you know what, if if it came down to the wire, I would probably hire a redneck like Ron to uh, build my bunker. Not that you're a redneck. <laughs> <or anything. laughs> okay, I won't take as a compliment because Thank I don't consider myself a redneck, you know. I am wearing a Texas shirt, though, you know, with American flag. But you're uh, oh, you, so you think I'm a redneck, huh? You're half you know, well, well, to Canada. Everybody, you know, south of a uh, certain uh, latitude is redneck. So, yeah. Well, hey, listen, I'm from Texas. We're all proud here. Uh, we all believe in um, we all believe in free speech. We're all patriotic. And I you couldn't be in a better place if shit ever does hit the fan than in Texas, where I'm at right now, because we all think alike. Um, we're, we, <laughs> you can carry a gun in Texas now. I mean, you you don't even have to get a license to carry a concealed weapon. You just carry it on you, whatever. But uh, our governor is great here. And I suggest if anybody's tired of California or Canada to come to Texas. <laughs> you, you guys got Elon Musk. You got Joe Rogan. You got uh, you got Mira Safety, who's based out of there. I don't know if you, you know Roman. Yeah, from, the gas mask guys. Yeah. Yeah, they're you know, everybody's going to Texas. So maybe I got to try to apply for a dual citizenship. I wonder what my chances are. Uh, pretty good. They'll let you in. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you coming out today. And guys, go and check out Atlas Survival Shelter's YouTube channel if you want to see, you know, really the state of the art in the industry. He's got some really cool videos that go in depth. He shows you all the details of these bigger bunkers and things which, you know, a lot of us are never going to be able to afford. But you know, when you when you start getting into this prepping stuff, it's good to know what's out there. And you also offer a lot of practical tips to people who may not be able to afford these bunkers. And like you say, you got this uh, $40,000 bunker in the works. So if anybody wants to capitalize on that, I guess I would encourage you to, you know, you heard it here first. So uh, give Ron a call. Anyways, thanks for coming out, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Nate. Have a good day. Take care. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.